This is the Shibcoin one month overview reading for the month of July 2023. It's currently May 14th, 2023, 6.51 p.m. Eastern Time. Shibcoin at the time of this reading is currently 0 0.00008783. That's five de uh, zeros after the decimal point, then 8782. Um, and the shuffle file we're about to play was created on uh, May 7th, 2023 at 10, 19 p.m. Eastern Time. That's this video right here. So the overall theme and behavior for Shipcoin in the month of July, <clears throat> from the standpoint of uh, like just like general one months, the Princess of Discs as the theme card is kind of a difficult card to determine direction. I'm gonna say sideways rotation for the most part. Um, there's a sharp drop that'll stand out in that period of sideways rotation. Um, behavior around the highest side, we have a U-shaped dip that forms near the intersection of two uh, perpendicular diagonal trend lines. And uh, behavior around the low slow, there's an important trough or bottom on a one month scale at least that'll stand out, uh, probably on a year to date kind of scale that'll stand out, Pro important trough or bottom. Um, and then it looks like that takes us into the following month where we have the Ace of Swords, which in, in all likelihood is indicating a highest high when we look at the one month, excuse me, the one year, we have a highest high cor correlation here in August. So it would make sense. Excuse me. <coughs> um, let's take a look and see how we're doing for the year thus far. All right. So we had a highest high in January and the end of January. And keep in mind, each of these clusters, you have to give the cards about two weeks wiggle room. So we, so we have indicated high sign in the, in the uh, end of January, and it looks like it ended up being in the first week of February. So pretty solid with a sharp drop, unicursal energy off of it, and then unicursal energy off the end of February as well, taking us into a prominent low in March. I have it as, a, as one of the lowest lows, although it looks like I was off on it being a lowest low. It is a, still a significant low that stands out. Um, April takes us into another prominent low. Unfortunately, we'll probably see a lower price level um, based on the fact that we have lower lows here and we've already beaten this low. So we're probably going lower, guys, uh, overall um, with like this unexpected move higher that takes place somewhere around uh, July, August. Um, so keep that in mind. But this is still pretty solid, just a little off on where the lowest low is as far as like overall chart behavior, really solid. Um, all right, so on the first, we have a rally that, along a diagonal trend line breaking through horizontal resistance. I'm sorry, uh, along a diagonal trend line that ends with a fast sudden move higher uh, and then a breakdown through that diagonal trend line with increasing volatility on the way down. Um, the decline takes us into uh, the second where we have a, a significant decline on the second and a prominent trough, possibly a lowest low here on the second the ace of cups sometimes is the lowest low i'll tell you uh, identifying a lowest low was not easy in this reading so i'm just going to give you like probable locations i'm not specifying exactly um but on the second is one of the mo most likely probable locations um there's a trade opportunity there there's actually a day trade opportunity there on the second which i'll talk about in the paid version um if you're interested in the paid version my friends it's a really great way to support the channel for those of you that aren't interested so much in like a day-to-day -day kind of trade, you're more interested in a longer term trade, it, it's important for me to let you know when you get the paid version of any of these readings, what you're actually getting is we talk about trades on a multi-year scale, we talk about trades on a one-year scale, we multi-month scale, we talk about trades for the month, how to what what to, what to enter for the long term. You know, there's a bunch of information that you just don't get in the public version, um, and it's a really great way to support the channel. So check it out, my friends. You go to Esso Meta Services or Esso Meta uh, Posts, click on that, and then it go down to monthly subscription. Click here. Pick whichever subscription you're interested in. In this case, we're talking about Bitcoin. Um, or if you want access to all of the paid versions, it's a steal for $250 a month. Really great way to support. In any case, w whatever you choose to subscribe to, we remember everybody that does that because um, they're really helping us to fulfill uh, our goals. Um, so thanks for that, guys. On the third, so we go from prominent trough on the first and a prominent trough on the second, which very well might be a lowest low, like towards the end of the day, sharp drop. 
Um, and then we have a sideways S formation within a channel that takes place on the third, um, creating a prominent crest there on the third in the midst of that back and forth behavior, up and down behavior, I should say, that takes place within the sideways S formation. On the fourth, um, we have quite a lot of price change, looks like to the downside, and this is the second um, most likely location to, that will have a lowest low here. With a, There's definitely a sharp drop here on the fourth. It really stands out in a lot of price change. Um, most likely, or there's possibility of a lowest low here, like towards the end of the day or the beginning of the fifth. There's sideways rotation on the fifth. Matter of fact, it doesn't look like it's a lowest low on the, four, on the fourth. But it does look like it was a low slow on the second. And then on, on the fifth, we have sideways rotation increasing with bearish momentum as we move forward in time. There's a peak or crest midday on the fifth. On the sixth, out of the decline that ends up taking place towards the end of the day on the fifth, um, out of the decline, we move from the bottom of a range all the way to the top of a range. It looks like there's a low at the end of the day on the sixth, so we probably move higher like at the end of the day on the sixth into the seventh where we have a rally that ends on the seventh uh a trade opportunity there i'll talk about in the paid version um and a sharp drop around the cusp of the seventh eighth um this is the most likely location of the lowest low here guys um on the seventh or this uh, the it's up for grabs the second or the seventh are the most likely locations for a lowest low i think um and there's an intentional fake out shake out of some kind on the eighth Let's see. Looks like uh, like a a, a sell-off of some kind on the eighth, but there's a lot there's um, highs at the end of the day on the eighth, so some tricky behavior there, like a sharp drop early in the day and then highs at the end of the day. Um, on the on the ninth, we have um, we decline through support to meet a second support that's on the scale of a one of a multi-day chart, and then we rotate sideways along support. Um, trade opportunity at the end of the day, I'll talk about in the paid version. Looks like we might have a crest at the end of the day as well. On the 10th, we have a, a prominent move higher, followed by a full retracement of that move back down, taking us into a decline on the 11th, down two and through support to meet another support where we bounce along that support sideways for a bit before breaking down through multiple supports into a trade opportunity and a significant trough at the end of the day on the 11th. Decline continues into the 12th um, with a with a significant um, trough as well on the 12th and a decline increases with the momentum moving forward into that trough trade opportunity on the 12th. On the 11th, an important range on a multi-day scale is highlighted. Yeah, an important price level on a one-year scale. Looks like an important range to the downside is highlighted there on the 12th. It's really hard to determine where the lowest low is, guys. But my, in fact, I think the lowest low might actually be here. No, I'm sorry, guys. It's 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 really up for grabs. But there's another location where we may have a lowest low. It's 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 tough to to determine. But there's definitely a significant trough here. Um, and then um, an important, an important um, range, to the lower end of a range there on the 14th. On the 14th, we have a significant move higher. It'll stand out as a as a major opportunity, one of the mo the biggest opportunities to trade um, in the month of July, maybe multi day, like more than month. Um, in rally increases into the 15th, reaching for a distant resistance. Reaching for a distant resistance. I'm uh, sorry, guys. I'm picking up on like a pretty sharp drop somewhere here into these lows. There's a pretty sharp drop here, guys. Around the like the end of the day on the 9th or the 10th or the 11th. Like this 11th, 12th is a significant decline. I think this is probably where the low ends up being. If I had to bet on any of these, I would say probably the low is here.
And if these don't end up being lows, we might even have like our first high over here. But in any case, if I had to bet, this is where the lowest low is, but there's high probability of all four of these locations. Um, and then it, it, from that, that price range, that lower end of a range, um, that's when we turn around and we, move, and we start to move higher. We have a prominent crest on the 16th in, the, in within a period of rallying that increases with momentum moving forward in time. On the 17th, that rally uh, continues along a diagonal trend line, breaking through horizontal resistance to meet a second resistance before pulling back to somewhere between those two price levels. And there's a significant trade opportunity there on the 17th as well. Um, important crest uh, on a one month scale there on the 18th that we sell off from down to and through support. We do a U-shaped reversal below that support, come back and reuse it as support. On the 19th, we have a significant move higher, <coughs> either to fill a previous gap down or um, out of oversold territory. There's a significant move higher. Um, it'll stand out on a multi-day chart, taking us to another prominent crest or peak there on the 20th in a period of sideways fluctuating rally that precedes a decline. It looks like on the 21st, we have a notable decline taking us um, into a continued decline on the 20th. Actually, we have like a pop and drop on the 21st. On the 22nd, we have a decline down to and through support to meet another support. We do a U-shape, uh, we do a, a sideways rotation along that support. And there's a prominent trough there on the 22nd as well. We move higher through resistance on the 21st, um, stay above it briefly and then break back down through the same price, price level shortly thereafter. Another move to the upside on the 21st, breaking through probably that same resistance momentarily and then with uh, staying above it briefly with a full retracement of that move to the downside back down on the 24th. It looks like somewhere between the 23rd and the 24th, we have a highest high as the most likely location. Um, and then uh, on the 25th, important technical price level on a one-year scale that's highlighted. So th th that high is there, that, like the, the princess of, of uh, swords again, like a really important price level around this four-day period here of the 23rd through the 26th. A lot of price change on the 26th. It looks like we declined from early in the day off of a peak or crest and important resistance level on a multi-day scale. And we declined pretty hard into the 27th. There's an important resistance level that we bump up against multiple times. We've bumped up against multiple times there on the 27th that we bump up against and then we decline pretty hard. Um, looks like there's a, a notable move higher to a peak or crest at the end of the day on the 27th, um, a, a move higher on the 28th, a significant move lower on the 29th, followed by the establishment of support on the 30th with some sideways rotation, a big move higher on the 30th, and then more sideways rotation along a higher level of support. On the 31st, sideways fluidity along key support, in equal amounts of bulls and bears, inflow and outflow. We usually finish off the price level where we started the price level. And then looks like we have a, a, a important high on a on the scale of a one year chart there uh, for August, especially when we look at the one one year scale. We have a high side correlation there in early August, um, as well as correlation to the Princess of Discs, which is both a cross congruency at the high here for August and also cross uh, cross reading correlation here. So significant high coming up here in August, and we'll talk about that and how to trade it in the paid version, my friends. That's Shipcoin for the month of July. Let me know what you think by hitting that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Most importantly, make sure to follow that rule of karma. You do so here at our resources tab of the website, Tarot for Traders, where we ask that you do donate 5% of the profits from the uh, information we give away freely here. Take 5% of those profits and send it forward uh, to one of these charities. It, it ensures abundance mine and the flow of abundance returning full circle to you and through you. The key is to have it go through you, not stop at you. Um, and then uh, we ask that 5% of the profits be donated back to the channel for all the work, free work that we do uh, through the Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, Wise. So thank you all my angel investors for that. That leaves you with 90%. Make sure you spend that money out of love and the universe is going to send it back to you tenfold from all directions, my friends. I'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned for the paid version.